blythe northumberland home to the last private offshore lifeboat in the country it works closely with the coast guard to rescue lives in the north sea the boat is owned by local millionaire barry elliott a man not short on self-belief the only thing i'm not certain about is where i'm going to die it's the only thing i'm not certain of. i'm certain of everything else this boat wouldn't be in Blythe if it wasn't for Barry Elliott. Barry might own the boat. Hey, hey. Nice one. But he leaves the rescuing to a dedicated crew of unpaid volunteers. Your heart's pumping, your general's gunning. And like coiled springs waiting to get out there. Last time, the crew ended a shambolic rescue by getting tangled up in their own tow rope. I see the ropes from the fucking prop. <clears throat> And Barry's attempts to run the organisation like his own business went down like a lead balloon. How can you sack a volunteer, oh, Barry? I've done a lot more for this one here. I don't know if you've got a bit I, of coin, but help. Oh, stop conducting yourself, or you're going to be asked to leave. Man's a knob. He's a right dick, that's what he is. There's pressure on that organisation, though, no, definitely. <laughs> The battle lines are drawn at Blythe Rescue. But a call out to a fishing boat with power failure is a chance for the crew to prove to Barry that they are up to scratch. There's a board over here. Hold on there. Crewman Adrian has more to prove than most. He lost his building job with boat owner Barry after going on a bender. Now he's back on the boat and off the booze. I just made a mistake. We all make mistakes in life, somewhere along the line. Do we not? The crew has given Adrian another chance, but Barry is threatening drink and drugs tests for all the volunteers. Zero tolerance, can't drink alcohol, can't take drugs. Uh, under most circumstances, I would certainly not want your volunteer and your services to be a, a, an emergency service worker. Zero tolerance. Is this a boat? Hang on, I've just got a couple of eyes, it makes you feel proud. You go out to sea like when you're on that boat, you're a team, but your family as well. Being on the lifeboat has helped other crew like unemployed trawlerman Billy Bell turn their lives around. I like it a little secret. Oh, I was wild, absolutely wild. I used to go and drink in nightclubbing and since I joined the lifeboat, it stopped like that. Just uh, what you call an EAA job, isn't it? I'm going to write all this out now. <laughs> this rescue's gone well, like most of the ten or so they do a year. But will it buy favour with millionaire lifeboat owner Barry Elliott? Brought up in a council house, Barry's gone on to build an extensive property empire and become one of the richest men in Blythe. We drive to win. Top dollar in the northeast. No, I'm a, an athlete. I'm an athlete. Running, snooker, darts, pool. Brilliant. Them. Everything I do, I want to be perfect. You know, everything I do, I would love to be perfect. I've got traits. I've got mannerisms that do border on perfection. Normally, I would have blown clean these up, man. Look at that. Oh, so dizzy. Barry is on a collision course with the lifeboat crew. I question the knowledge and competency of those aboard. Which led After an email from the harbour master lambasting the rescue that went wrong, Barry's determined to sort things out. If I go and do something about it and it happens a second time, it looks bad on us, doesn't it? At sea, what we used to have was uh, people came from the deck who used to think, oh, navigate as captain, I can do this get up to them dizzy heights and turn completely different from being a normal working fella. To me, Barry's the same. Made his money, good, good luck to him. And he wants everybody to know everybody will do as he says. I know what needs to be done down there. Barry's turned his businessman's eye to the lifeboat accounts. I query the pennies, you know, just every receipt in, in the company. Um, and you've got to, you've, you've got to do it. And I treat the lifeboat like my company. And certainly the bank book, from the fundraising side, there's, there's not a lot of uh, money going in um, to sustain 
the organization. Barry thinks there's not enough cash coming in, despite the best efforts of head fundraiser Denise, Skipper Kerry's wife. She's captain of an unpaid army of lifeboat women who stay ashore, organising a constant round of tombolas, cake sales and tin shaking. I haven't had a full cup of tea. I haven't had a cigarette in an hour and a half. <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit. Barry put up £95,000 to buy the boat, but fundraising keeps it going. That lifeboat in the station doesn't belong to us. Belongs to the people of Blythe. It's the people of Blythe that give money to keep that boat in the water. Hold on, Denise, let's give me a hand back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what, are you what are you doing playing with his hair up there, mate? Denise, enthusiasm, brilliant. Commitment, brilliant. But that doesn't make this place survive. We'll have another meeting, give her another chance. Uh, if it's not working, we'll have to, we'll have to look further afield. Can nobody dip into the Kit Kats? The bottles, uh, the cans of Coke? No. Fanta. Sweets? Do not dip into them because she's got them to account Can for. Can you please look at other people? Because Shell... Why look at me? Because does that not see? I've never touched the Kit Kats. Yet. If you want a Kit Kat, so if you want a pay for them, because she's like in the eye. Shell's got to account for them. Same as the other ones. I never touched any more ones either. You lies! <laughs> I got the blame. Because it is you! <laughs> she can't stop talking though, you know. Denise is a good talker, you know. And when she's talking to you, she, she can't talk quiet, she's got to shout. You know, and he had Denise before you see her. Call her motor mouth. Motor mouth? That's what they call us, motor mouth. And more. If I've got something to say, I'll say it. You either take us away, I am, or not at all. Hold on, Denise. Denise, wait a minute. If you've got something to say, you yeah. say it in my face. Aye. Do not go and Aye. tell Anne things. Yeah. I'll, that I'll, you are I'll, not going to deal yeah. with motor mouth. Yeah. I've yes, never said that. I have. I've I have got, got a big mouth. mouth. I'll tell you. What I'm trying to say is yes. it doesn't matter. Barry and Denise rarely see eye to eye. Almost never, in fact. But if I want to call him out of mouth, then I've got to expect the consequences. I don't call people names, Denise. I don't do it. It's not courteous, and I'm a professional courteous man, man. Right? I'm a professional courteous man. If I want to call you out of mouth, I will. Big mouth, loud mouth. I didn't want to call you that. I didn't want to call you that. To be quite honest, there's nobody likes you. I didn't blame them. You've got to admit yourself, I wind you up and you wind me up. How the hell? Tracy lives with you is beyond me, mate. <laughs> I've got big, really I've got a big, me. I've got a big hand. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> why are you not there? Big, I'm big, you know. Denise, loud, vocal, passionate. She's, she is a passionate woman, but I think she gets it wrong most of the time. As the boss of his own company, Barry is used to laying down the law. I, I, don't, I don't have to take that off him. I'm, I'm a volunteer. I, I'm not his paid workforce. He likes somebody to sit there and say, yes, Barry, we'll do this. Yes, we'll do that. I think that's why me and you's not liked by him. Because, yeah, he doesn't like confrontation. He doesn't like answering him back. And that's all there is to it, really. At, at the minute, it's impossible to get rid of Barry, and this is what I'm trying to tell staff and Denise. You, you, you kind of just vote this fella out because the fundraising is going to have to increase something. Oh, so, right. something terrific, it is. The more money the lifeboat families bring in, the less they will be dependent on Barry. Tonight, they are gathering for a rock and roll party thrown by Billy's daughter, Michelle, the fifth big fundraiser this year. Chicken drumsticks, put them. Oh, you've got one in your hand. <laughs> Grateful for anything, but I'd rather have a lot of money. Money, money, money. Just want your money. <laughs> It's a struggle raising money in Blythe, but they'll have a bloody good time trying. <laughs> 6 
soon Billy tries his own hand at fundraising. A couple of Michelle's friends, great losses. There's, a, there's about eight or nine of them. You know, they're all like lesbians and that, you know, but they're great fun. They says, we want you to do a strip, you know? And we went, what? I want you to do a strip. If you strip off, we're going to give you some money. Get the money in! Oh, oh, so me and Baz just, like, start taking my top off in the wall. There were high-end fivers on the dance floor. There were high-end punt coins. There was absolutely loads of money on the dance floor. We had a good laugh, you know. Then the evening takes an unexpected twist. Skipper Kerry spots a young woman wearing Chrome and Adrian's lifeboat T-shirt. The lifeboat T-shirt is a badge of honour. Adrian is in trouble. Really, it's Adrian to blame. No, it isn't. She's pinched it off Adrian. She isn't lifeboat crew when she's wearing it. Yes, but really, we didn't want any trouble in there. Denise tackles Adrian head on about the T-shirt. Can't we, can I? Whatever I do, goes wrong. Well, what you do is you go and straight up and you take that top off that lass. So it's not just a T-shirt, it's part of your uniform. Do you know what I mean? And if she comes out and causes any trouble, it's a bad, it's bad thing for the, the lifeboat. Go and get that t-shirt. Go and get that t-shirt. Let me go out. Hello, Adrian. I need to have a word with you. No, no, not no. I'm not gonna bother. No, don't want the tears to be there. Someday more will be there. Adrian's not had a good night, but the fundraisers are happy. They've raised £500 for the lifeboat coffers. It's, it's not enough. We need £40,000 a year to keep this business going. Charity business going. Um, the insurance is eight grand. The diesel's six grand. And here we're nowhere near it. Deputy Skipper staffs an unemployed painter and decorator. The lifeboat's been a lifeline for him. How many neck curtains, man? Are you married with them, man? <laughs> Is he all that fun? Good boy. He's an African great, and I'm going to allow him to speak. I'm not going to allow him to swear because Carl swears. He's trying to teach the powder, said Carl put the kettle on. Ah, you little shit, you. Oh, man, get off. His wife, Carol, works as a cleaner while staff divides his time between the boat and five children. Good boy. Kiss. It's ten years since they first met. I've seen her looking at us, you know, with her little puppy dog eyes. And her just glaring up at us, you know, as if she'd seen God. And I went across. And I got her out of her hand. And I lifted her from my chair like that, and I put her and I kissed her on the lips. And I says, listen. I says, don't go anywhere. You're mine. Hey. And she looks and says, who the hell does he think he is, like, you know? <laughs> and I thought, eh, he's all right. <laughs> End up falling in love with him. But the lifeboat comes first. He's definitely married to the lifeboat. Definitely lifeboat it is. 
Today, staff's on a one-man publicity and money-raising drive for the lifeboat. I'm looking for a Coast FM. Me, I'm not. No swearing. I keep Nothing. forgetting or definitely What's make What's your regime in the morning? Me, I'm just look in the mirror. <coughs> and you realise I don't need to do anything? Exactly. I'm what you call a house husband. Right, I see. Well, How's I'm that going for you, Neil? It's all right because the wife uh, prepares the tea and everything and she goes to work and now I have these heated up in the microwave. So you're a house husband but you don't cook the tea. What is it that you do? Well, I pick the kids up and make sure that they come in ready for their tea. <laughs> <laughs> a very, very valuable job. Well, listen, Neil, I'm only joking because I tell you what, volunteering like what you and the other guys do down there is absolutely fantastic. Every day is a different, uh, different situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when there's lads uh, come down there, even lasses... Can we just define the word even? Even lasses. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, um, they're not how to boil a kettle and that, so... <laughs> You know, it's no, kind of, hey. So uh, it's quite easy for them. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Neil. It's yeah, been it's so nice that. to have you. Next up, we've got Alaya and Take That. All boat related, just for you, Neil, and for all of the lovely volunteers if live all weather lifeboats. Thank you. Bloody hell. You're worried about not being able to talk. What's the matter with your man? Uh, where are you, man? Uh. Staff might think it's a man's world out there but he's about to meet his match. This is Uli. Cut adrift from her native Austria when she married a local man, she wants to storm the all-male bastion of the lifeboat crew. I'm a former sailor and I wanted to be connected to the sea again. I was surprised that there were no women on board. Don't put the kettle on yourself, you lazy twat. Go on. I can't. I'm chewing for a cup of coffee. You know where the cups are there. Oh. I'm not used to wind in public or something like that. And uh, staff celebrated. I can let the chore fire off for that. You are down there. Do you need any help? Point seven. Uli's not prepared to stick to fundraising. She used to be a skipper herself. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I was better off coming off the side where you're working. Look. But you're in here. Right, look. 5506, 5507, 5507. This is a different skill, Choi. Staff is underwhelmed by his new recruit. When he gets too overexcited, he can take over. So um, I think he's not one of the best teachers. That's not. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. You're all anyway. wrong, man. No. Anyway, so I Just signed this here. Get it done. Okay. Oh, hey. I go home with the fact that I was right and he thinks he's right. That's about it. Oh, she's hard work lately. Just thought, this is every week, every week, you know. <laughs> Uli's proving a headache, and now Chrome and Adrian's a worry too. What have you been doing with? Yeah, a bit of fun. Oh. What are you on the drink, mate? Eh? Oh, I was drinking, mate. Yeah. Caught you, did he? No, no, I ate a concrete post, mate. I fucking hurt. <laughs> really hurt. You're going to have to be careful on what you're doing, mate. Eh? I well, know, I know. You've got to calm down and drink and everything and all, you know. Yeah. You've got to just get yourself back on track and get back down to training and everything, you know. Yeah. See, Kerry, because I ain't Kerry wants to see you. Oh, I know. My belly does. <laughs> right. See you later, chat. See you later. See you later. I'll be honest with you, I don't just go around the pub and have a pint. I'll go down to that pub, go from there, I'll just go walking around every, every, all over the pubs. I do the Coventry and Torquay and London, up here. I'm doing it here now. I shouldn't be in nightclubs like at my age. I should be settling down, but I say I still think I'm still like uh, 20 years of age, to be honest. I still want what like uh, I had them years ago. If he wants to be part of the lifeboat crew, he has to get himself sorted out. And uh, I can only take so much. I'm trying to be as, as, as lenient as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as 
um, helpful as I can to him. And uh, he just seems to throw it back in my face. Lifeboat Chairman Barry has heard crewmen have been out drinking in their lifeboat T-shirts. Would it stick? Would it stick that we've got people wearing them pissed up in bars in Blythe? It probably would. I, I mean, it's, kind uh, of it's. I, 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 I mean, as I'm saying, I fully agree with what you said. Barry Elliott, his name's on the top of this thing here. And to be honest, like it or lump it, I'm responsible for the lot. If an individual gets pissed outside and he wears, wears the badge, it actually always comes back to me. Did you know you had a team of strippers with Barry one night? Eh, what are you on about? If it's true. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I can answer that one. I it, don't it, need it, no, it, I'm not it, interested. There's thousands, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. <laughs> I mean, professional organisations don't um, show themselves in pubs or clubs or whatever. Barry wants more rigorous checks on the crew. What I'll need to see uh, down here is the crew. Are they medically fit? Are they deemed suitable? Have they been CRB checked? You might lose your crew. You might lose individuals that you want here because they don't pass a test. If you want this to survive, that's tough. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the only way that we can cut the shit in this organisation. Right, thank you. Cheers. When he wants something, he's got the bit between his teeth that goes for it. He doesn't let go. He doesn't let go until he gets what he wants. And it can be quite ruthless. I think you've got to be like that in business. You've got to be, haven't you? Barry wants to see the procedures in place. I'll put them in place. Doesn't bother me if that's what keeps him happy. Kerry wants to do what's right, but that means firing a friend. I don't think my dad particularly likes it. I don't think anybody would once, yeah, in an organisation like that and you're obviously friends with people, then nobody likes to say it to them, you're going to have to take a step back. Even if Barry wasn't there. When there's alcohol involved, then that's when my dad comes out and he has to put his foot down. Right, Adrian. Yeah, good. I, I class you as a friend as well as Same as. as 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 well as part of the crew. Mm. The the pressure I'm under from people above me who I don't know where they're getting all this feedback from. But they're getting the feedback. So uh I, I kinda take the risk of anybody being out there who I think might jeopardize any any kind of operation over there. It only takes one little slip and you can be in serious trouble. Or oh, stand down. Believe me, I hate to do it. He hate it. Done, mate. I, I want you back here. Mm. But you get yourself pulled together. And... Okay. Adrian is off the crew, but he's desperate to stay involved. I can't sit still, like, I've got to be doing something. Yeah. Like, there's all, like, a bit of painting to do or, you know, there's all something to, like, find. If I can have that little bit left of the lifeboat station for now. To get myself sorted, that'd be great. Champion. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Thank you very much. <sighs> you want a coffee or tea? I'm going to have a cup of tea. Tea? No sugar. A bit of sugar. One sugar, please. Right. No problem. Yeah. I'll still be mulling over it for a few days yet, wondering if I've made the right decision. Hopefully I have. We could do that job, man, couldn't we? Bet you. But I'm not staffs on and you're not that one. He doesn't want any women on board, he says. <laughs> Adrian has been stood down, and as the crew head out for training, Uli's abandoned ship too. Here comes Miss Kugler. Uli's lifeboating career ran unexpectedly aground when she broke her foot jumping off a wall. 
But she'd had enough anyway. So have to go the way that I'll just take it. The lifeboat is done and dusted at the moment. Staff and Billy felt too um, too challenged by me. I wanted to learn the ropes, but they didn't they didn't give me the chance. Try and explain why you know it's just just a prop I had mostly, you know. And she just wouldn't take it in. She would ask stupid questions after stupid questions. And I just couldn't pull up with that link, you know. We are living in the 21st century, so I don't believe there should be only men on a lifeboat. It's rubbish. It's like little boys who have a big toy, and the big toy is the lifeboat. This is what I think at the moment. Adrian's volunteered to take Uli home. You were supposed to be here by two o'clock, by the way. What happened? I don't, I don't go by time, and no personal service to anyone. Should be grateful. See, that's what females are like. Demanding. Uli, I've lost track on Uli. Um, but he always not at the station anymore. Is that again? Do you want me to go home? Don't start winding me up, Uli, because I'm knackered. Where do we go now? Um, I was going to take you back to Austria, lot to your parents. You're taking the mickey or what? Did you turn on the heating? Please turn it off. If you carry on the way you are, I'll get staff onto you. Staff? What will he do to me? <laughs> you don't want to know. Don't wind me up if you don't want me to carry on like this. There's another one I'll miss. Uli's gone, but there's one constant at the lifeboat station. The need to raise cash to keep the boat afloat. The lifeboat open day is the most important fundraiser of the year. It's all hands on deck to get ready.